Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. Uh, this is the format where I draw over fellow artists' work, try to make it better, offer some critique, and all of that. Um, but before we get into it, um, let's talk a little bit about the nature of this format. Because, of course, up to now there's very little um, followers, very little viewers that's expected. Uh, I'm just starting out. But uh, nevertheless, I want you guys to understand what I'm trying to do here. So if you look for this kind of uh, stuff, people claiming to fix uh, artworks, uh, uh, painting over artworks, critiquing artworks. Um, uh, I watched some and um, what I realized is that um, a lot of people do it in a very presenter style fashion. So they will just um, tell you what they think and then they will offer you will see how the picture evolves very quickly It's gonna be like pa pa pam and then uh, you see a time-lapse uh, thing and then the picture evolves and it starts to really look better because obviously uh, If it's a, a big artist with a lot of followers, they know what they're doing, but they're not really showing you so um, uh, Eventually you'll see the image um, and it's a lot better, but you don't know exactly how long of a time they took or uh, what exactly they were doing. And um, I think the reason why they do it is because they think that otherwise the format will get too long. And also maybe they don't want to expose themselves too much and their workflow. So in this format, I'm going to show you exactly what I'm doing and I'm going to do it in real time. Um, so that you can understand everything that's going on. Of course, if you, sometimes you might have to pause it. I cannot slow down, obviously, um, just for people to understand, but you're seeing everything in real time. And if I'm struggling, then you will see me struggle. So that's kind of the idea. I don't want to uh, make it out to be like, oh, this is easy for me. And like with the flick, uh, uh, of a brush stroke I'm like just magically doing everything better because that's not what usually happens people struggle and people uh, have uh, to try out stuff and also formulate their ideas onto the canvas so that being said I hope you guys appreciate this approach uh, if you have something to say about this leave it down in the comments and I'll get to you um, today's art is uh, by Sag Ackerman and uh, it's a wild image you can see it here in the background and uh, yeah we'll see what we can do um, check out sex stuff uh, links uh, are in this description of the of the video and yeah um, without further ado let's get it all right guys so this is quite the image isn't it so let's uh, first of all see what Zach wanted to do here and how I see it. And then uh, we'll talk about what we can alter and what maybe we can change that so he kind of can reach uh, his vision a, a little bit um, better. But so first of all, I'll do as always, uh, do a little thoughts and analysis. So uh, it will be quite hard to pick a color that you can is visible on everything because this image is very colorful so and you can see that immediately so first of all what's the image like this image is wants to do a lot which is why I picked it um, because he gave me the choice between uh, two three different images uh, basically said he doesn't care which I appreciate it a lot so I picked this image because um, it is really interesting and it, it, it does something that I see a lot being done in young artists that want to do something super exciting. They want to like put a lot of stuff into one image and somehow make it work. And the problem with that is that it is kind of the hardest thing that you could possibly do and to achieve that is really hard and I'm not sure how well we are going to deal with this image today but yeah let's just see so first of all is composition so we got here several planes that they work in a certain way so uh, we got the hero over here 
and uh, nothing is really silhouetted here other than the background mountains right so uh, everything is kind of in the middle tonally uh, and then the color is pretty much through the whole palette which is not such a good thing and I, we'll see uh, later why that is so uh, what what uh, a lot of people think is that um, yeah I want all the color but somehow I want to make it work and a lot of times you, you just can't do it okay so um, the pink sky then with um, with a uh, yeah, he's got pink in here too, so passive light color, there's a basic understanding of that, which is good. Also here, the atmospheric uh, perspective um, kind of works well, but then here in the foreground, we don't see the influence of that pink passive lighting anymore, which is why uh, that stuff here in the foreground, it looks pretty much like it's not part of the same image as this background is, right? So then uh the ratios i i would say are not too bad so it's not like a half half situation which would be kind of boring um i i have to say that i think that the landscape area um given that it offers not much new is a little bit big when the area which there's something going on is actually a little bit cramped here um, character fits nicely and it's also a good choice that his head and where you want to look at the details is not really silhouetting against anything that is super complicated right this is not what you want and uh, arguably this stuff is already a little bit too much because there's the hand and also you know uh, overlapping with the trees and those trees are overlapping the other trees and then there, there's uh, a lot going on so uh, Let's see, yeah. Um, I think the image is very high. Um, it could be good to move the character up a little bit, cut the image down a little bit so that it gets more uh, compressed in verticality. That could be a good idea. Um, then there's um, lighting wise, I, you cannot really immediately see where light is coming from it's coming from the top obviously we have some shadows here in deeper uh, areas but we also have some shadows here on top of of uh yeah let's say structures right uh here on this right side uh, and then that is consistent throughout the character these shadow lines so that pretty much indicates that lighting is coming from the left and from the front that means, um, judging from the horizon, that if you had a nice little triangle here, lighting would be coming like so. And the direction it would come towards is from the front of the camera, right? So it hits him here, 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 and then this area is dark. Um, that would also, of course, mean that this the shadow is not uh, respecting this lighting. Uh, but as for the rest of it, it's pretty much is all right, I would say. Um, but then what you can see is that um, as for the trees, there's very little shadowing going on, going on. So uh, and that's it's kind of understandable because the, the tree would may, maybe project a shadow like this because this being the, now the light angle, this would also apply to all other objects in the scene, of course. Then uh, the monster would not cast a shadow anywhere because there's nothing behind. The hero, we don't know how big that gap is down here, so arguably would also not cast any shadow. The only shadow it would cast, you would see it here, right? So it would be a shadow like this, if this lighting theory held uh, true. So um, this we need to make it consistent, of course, and then we need to find a solution for uh, all these color variations. So first of all, let's check the layer, the layers here. So one of the first layers is this uh, overlay colorizing layer, which gives a purple tint to everything, which tells me something. And that is that 
he kind of knows that it's too colorful and he wants to tone it down and then he didn't know if it was such a good idea and the reason why it's not such a good idea is that uh, putting one tone uh, over everything has very very um, strong limitations to do that uh, after you're done painting everything so he didn't go with it and I think it's the right decision here but what we what he wanted to do is he wanted to still I guess see those colors but still have one dominating tone which is exactly what you should have so the thought process here is right but it's just not the best way of doing it so as always uh, by now you know guys that uh, I'm disposing of all the layers which I don't need but before I'm doing that uh, I will save uh, a back uh, a backup layer so first of all I will combine all of these this will be the image uh, for later comparison right and then uh, we'll go through these layers so this layer goes then this layer is um, <laughs> this layer is the character and you can see all the stuff from the character in it will not go too much into that because I think that he has a lot of layers so he's now painting the character in here and there's different light and shadow layers going on there um, maybe let's do away with the glow the glow is the thing that I I think we don't need it in one layer um, other than that we can merge these layers um, I think it's pretty much the same except for the glow now so let's keep this version I would say because the glow is something that I I would um, want in a separate layer and it was in a separate layer but then I want to just simplify uh, everything that uh, contains the character and then different planes so that I can more easily paint over it shadow we need to fix that stays off already talked about this now this layer foreground layer group one thing I have to say is that's on point here is very good from the beginning is that everything that needs to be in front is on top layer wise so the layer order seems to be on point the character in front of the rock structure is exactly where it should be so that everything covers nicely against everything else that is behind it so that the layering is is done correctly so um, this a lot of sub layers some of which are just the rocks and I'm not uh, one, one more thing because this is partially painted and partially is it an outline style and that's uh, in some uh, forms of anime and uh, that's what you see you see characters outlined and then the backgrounds are painted so it's not my style which is why I will not respect the outline style here I will just dispose of the outlines and then have well I can only do uh, to uh, to an extent my style so you'll have me to forgive me for that I'm not an, uh, a dedicated uh, comic uh, drawer so um, therefore um, well let's just keep it like this merge group I'm big into merging and also what I don't want is see all the transparent stuff over here we'll get rid of it right so we have here those rocks this layer it doesn't seem to do anything stays off next layer is those trees in the foreground the reddish trees I actually like those trees but we would have to um, add some shadow and do some tonal corrections there's for some reason is some glow also over here maybe what he thought is that the the glow which is supposed to affect the trees is this glow and then uh, the rod itself has a separate glow which it did have but we switched it off right so I'm going to not keep this glow and uh, the rest is fine I don't understand really why uh, we need all the separate layers but that's something else I um, I was myself guilty of that for quite some years right to always amass layers 
uh, is about all about this uh, illusion that you can edit everything and go back and uh, you know not take any risks which in reality of course is not true so now we're in the middle ground of this uh, thing and there's all the parts of those trees uh, yeah and I think yeah layering still kind of correct that's uh, it's pretty impressive because a lot of people mess that up they put stuff you know on top which is actually in the background and then it logically makes no sense for it to overlap or or to be overlapped by something else so this is uh, he did a nice job of that but I I'm sad to say all of this for me is one thing it's all the same thing uh, and I will that's just the way I work for me this is one thing reason for that is everything is organic it's not so many different tones it's all natural tones that are very uh, pretty close you know you don't have like a blinking red in here which you need to isolate from the rest and therefore uh, I can paint all of this pretty much into each other the, the the only thing that makes sense to keep separate here would be the water because the water it, it uh, I think it was uh, either on top or it was handled like a cutout in my opinion handling it like a cutout is the way you want it to handle you want to handle it because then you can have full control over this water surface with all the reflections and, and everything going on because the water behaves quite differently from the rest um, but we, we can do uh, that uh, later. So here are some clouds and some smoke that is covering, you know, the creature over here. So these two, I will redo them. So therefore they stay off for now. Now we have the creature itself. Um, outlines. Shadows, they work. And then back there is the yeah the color uh, foundation i would say i would call that so um yeah let's see maybe those outlines we already uh, change so let's keep it like this for for a second merge this keep the outlines uh, see what we can do with them in a second now this is the first layer that does not work at all in my opinion and that is the layer where you know you have a dark kind of um, emitting steam or uh, kind of an energy that is uh, you know surrounding the creature and it doesn't really I, I'm not sure what it's supposed to do but it's 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 it, it's appearing like uh, dirt basically on the canvas uh, in, in comparison to everything else so this uh, goes and then this is pretty interesting we have more overlay colorization which is a good way to go then we have part of a sketch here that was switched off already so um so he didn't want to keep the sketch for the for the environment apparently now this works fine looks clearly better with it on if you just look at the sky so that's fine um next is the mountain next are some other mountains and then we have one more sketch back there and then we have the sky color like a gradient for the sky so this all can be one layer so now what you do with those mountains is pretty much up to you can put that all on one layer or put uh, the mountains on different layers for me for me this is one layer sky is one layer everything that switched off now goes because we did not let's say this 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 and this so you see how i slimmed this down a lot and that's for me of course to get uh, to be faster uh just uh, in a minute uh, so the only thing that is kind of unresolved is now the 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 demon right um, the titan demon or whatever you would call it so um, now my thoughts to on how to make this better um, 
or different. So this is comparison to what it was before with all of what I wanted to switch off. It looks like this. Uh, looked better before, I have to say, but as a foundation to change it, this is better. Okay, so um, this was the plan. So what I'm going to do, let's formulate another plan. Um, I'm going to make this line less aggressive, maybe somewhat here. Then I'm going to make the demon bigger because you could say that it's pretty much the focal point here because the guy is looking at the demon and it's like a face off, right? So, um, or maybe just spotted him, but anyways, the we know what's uh, what uh, this will um, end up being probably a fight or um, some kind of a um, how would you call it? Um, some kind of a struggle between the two all right so then something i don't like is him standing here on top of the frame basically this i want to change so maybe make this guy a little bit bigger even and then uh i don't think we need to see his shoes or feet because that's a little bit much because I don't want to be a focal point here. Stuff going on here is not helping us because there's stuff going on here. There's stuff going on here. There's stuff going on here. Uh, and so that's one too many things going on. And then there's, uh, uh, we have this uh, border where there is a lot of um, potential contrast going on, uh, which is quite a little bit crowded. So this works well. Um, and I'm not sure if we need these trees over here, but we'll see about that. Also not sure if we need this complication because there's then also stuff overlapping, which is kind of a secondary focal point, which, which kind of uh, gets into competition with the main focal point, right? So we're going to, to weaken this one, I think. Strengthen the guy, strengthen the demon, and then strengthen maybe the pose and um, yeah, do away with uh, these lighter areas here a little bit. Okay, so now, first of all, we need to do is color correct, right? Before we do anything, um, we, I think... What we now need to know what tones we want. I want a blue, like a blue like this blue over here. That's a good blue. Then that's too big of a difference. So I'm going to do a blue in blue sky layer. Um, and then blue will be my passive light color. Uh, that will be good because here is some reds going on and then the reds can i think uh work as a uh, like a secondary like a minor complementary color uh to the blue and then here um we'll see what we do about this tone uh, over here but then maybe the demon can even shine reddish uh against the blue and then maybe this glow comes back in, in a way and uh, yeah that's um, that's going to be the goal to 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 strengthen that and then the next thing we need is we need uh, because all the contrast now is here in the demon head and in the guy uh, against the background but the thing is that these contrasts should not be the same right you have a um, um, this um, um, atmospheric um, perspective uh, always forget how they call it in English so that basically tells you that contrast needs to go down the further you move away. So we need to respect that so that we get a more cinematic uh, view to it. All right, so let's do this first. I'm going here through that and I'm making this more the same. Maybe even less saturated in the sky.
could be dark. Well, maybe not too dark. Let's see all these guys, uh, all these uh, mountains. Now, this doesn't work anymore, right? This is wrong now. Purple needs to go. Uh, so we check for reds. No reds in here. So we'll just basically... Um, is that magentas? Yeah, some magentas. So turning the magentas towards the blue hue. Uh, and I'm looking for integration of these latest uh, mountains with the sky color. Right? Uh, once I think that works out, down saturation of these. So that's pretty much what I'm what I'm looking for. Uh, and then the whole thing I think is pretty saturated. Take this down a little bit. Let this demon have the limelight, color-wise, right? Uh, Saturation-wise, also, or maybe not saturation-wise, because it's pretty far removed. And one one thing that you want to do if you want to make something uh, look giant is that you actually tonally make it also look far away, and that means that it cannot have all these popping contrasts, right? So then. Now we have something that we can, we have a basis for these outlines because I want to do away with them. But before I do, we'll just make them like the rest or maybe a little bit darker. Maybe even darker. So that we have, they now work more like a sh as a shadow than they do work as an outline anymore. And the next thing is that this is no longer necessary to be separate. I think. So we merged the group and then we're left with one demon uh, head over here. So next thing is this is also further away uh, and now this needs to uh, basically be... Um, now the reflection doesn't work anymore because this is clearly not the tone that's reflecting like that sky tone but I wanted to do away with the water anyways because I think that the water in this scene is just one thing too many right so the water it will reflect it will do stuff it will have a different hue it will bring you know more complication into the scene and it's acting like you know something that is really doing weird shit between the actual you know uh distance that you want to um to keep it calm because uh, at both ends of this distance is something uh really important going on right so tonally this needs to these as greens blues stuff like that first of all before we do this let's get rid of the of the blue altogether or maybe i'll show you another trick here um we have some cyan i would say the cyan yeah, it doesn't affect the water too much, so we can keep it. Do we have blues in here? Blues, we only have it in the water. That's pretty handy because then I can just change those the hue uh, here of these uh, of these deep blues so that it gets more like the rest, basically. Um, other than that, we need to grab these greens now and then move them more towards integrating with that sky color a little bit so see see how this immediately becomes atmospheric it, it starts to work so well if you hit that right hue compared to how it was before um, hit okay if you like it and then now this is tricky because this is way too bright being so close to the camera so what we need to do here is um, we also change, first of all, uh, lightness. And if you do that, what you need to do is you need to crank uh, saturation again. And then maybe we look for a tone that is now complementing the scene, right? And I don't want to completely do away with the orangey red. Maybe that's really interesting, right? So for now, We'll keep it like this and then maybe up the contrast maybe through the levels even right maybe we do something like this and then 
this we'll see about that uh, it's not yeah why not um, as for this foreground this is too bright in my opinion but um, so let's see mm -hmm. levels go down keep some of that brightness here and then what we need to do tonal correction because the purple is no longer that accurate here so purple needs to go a little bit it needs to go a little bit towards the blue and once it does you can see that it integrates uh, a lot better and then maybe even we'll even go down but this we need to redraw it uh, uh, somewhat so now the character the character what I said is that uh, I want to get rid of um, his feet now we either can put them in the shadow which would be a good solution or we make him bigger so that the feet reach outside of the canvas uh, but we'll see what we can uh, do so make him him a little bit bigger uh, we need to pay attention to the stuff you know and then that the stuff does uh, is uh, on top of a nice area where it doesn't cut too many things and uh, where uh, it can really um, um, look uh, good uh, next to the background but yeah that's not so it's not so critical right now because we can still uh, change that so next thing is that um, so we're pretty down in layers right now so now i'm redistributing that scene now, now we're making some cuts and some changes i said i want to make this flatter so first of all i'll cut through here um, here's a tree coming out but tonally it doesn't really stand out from the rest so i don't think we need it i think it's good to have this here as a tree um, border, a tree line, and then behind that everything else will be basically, I will treat it yeah, as, as uh, being on the same layer, I guess. So first what we need, cut the trees that we want, right? So the, those are uh, these in the, in the foreground. Uh, and I'm cutting them in a way now that respects the character a little bit more. So this here, this overlapping, I'm not doing it. Uh, this here, I'm not doing it. Uh, let the character breathe a little bit. So lasso tool, something I love to use. Uh, if you ever have seen me doing anything before, you know that. Uh, the reason for that is it's is fast, gives you a nice crispy silhouette and uh, you immediately, you can already skip a lot of the, uh, a lot of the um, shape painting process that you otherwise would have to do later on in the image. So this we keep all of this uh, this tree being bigger i'm not keeping that letting the tree be smaller and smaller all right so those are the trees i want from from that scene layer via copy we do and now have a look at this because they were all all of these trees were too bright right and that's a common mistake with trees like something that absorbs so much light it will always be the darkest right so in there it will be dark over here will be dark in those trees inside it will be just dark okay you don't need to go full black uh, as maybe with the character but it needs to be much darker than it was so and the new silhouette immediately shines because uh, 
because of the way I did the, the cutting here. Okay, so um, you will see that even more because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to influence the rest of it, right? All of this. So and the, the way I'm doing it is pretty simple. You can even you can either just distort it to move around this tree line uh, to make this a little bit more uh, less steep, I would say. Um, maybe we even move it down. Let the character look out. This is what I, I think, I'm not sure if we should do this because the idea was to also sell the distance and selling the distance you do it through the middle ground, right? So there's an argument to be had here uh, for, for this. The argument against that is that the head doesn't st st stick out as much, right? So that's, uh, that's the one thing that we need to maybe consider. So maybe what we do is having look just outside of here and still have this be uh, kind of an imposing scene. Maybe we higher this, lower that. We'll need to see how we deal with this situation because it's not ideal, right? I will say, I will say that much. And maybe uh, a solution to that is to make the character even bigger and we can try it out right away. So because if the character sticks out some more then we don't have this problem right so we now have him facing the demon in a, in, a, in, a, in a different way so maybe we do that you can always go back this is not no biggie it's not uh, nothing nothing went wrong yet or nothing is uh, problematic yet so now i have to uh, add here the tones that are missing i'm getting rid of the water as i said so I need to paint in some of those browns and then um, we have the foreground now we have this demon uh, pretty exposed which is not so bad I would say we make him bigger and then something more because his shoulders are nice it's nice to see those imposing shoulders right over here and that's also because now see the spikes on the shoulders do the same as the trees right that's not good so you you want to give room for these spikes to to show themselves in my opinion so also what you want maybe is this neck is awfully long uh, which of course it could be right it could that could be the whole Thing that's so intimidating about this creature in this case I want him to be a little bit more compact and the trick here is that if he's more compact I can make him even bigger right and get away with it so I need to move this head down somewhat and then maybe redraw this 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 neckline to be uh, to be um, uh, kind of uh, a little bit thinner, right? So that that might work. Maybe even turn this head a little bit, just a little bit. Then we can see we scale the whole thing some more. And then let's get rid of some of these trees. And the way I want to do this is, of course, um, first over here, I want more trees. So that's going to be fine. Draw, lasso drawing some of these trees, right? Um, Take a little time to do this. Draw some spiky trees. And once in a while one will stick out. Make this a little bit more um, organic. Now that he's bigger, I can overlap him a little bit more because he's still very present, right? The demon that is. So Over here, I'm going up a little bit with this tree line. I 
you need some for this you need some practice um, to to make it always uh, work um, now what was the dark tone over here that works this tone basically and I'm keeping uh, doing stuff with this tone now silhouetting these trees and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make an inverse selection uh, I have everything else selected now and now the only thing I need to do is to subtract from this selection basically everything that I want to keep it's a little bit complicated to do <laughs> but then I can just make sure I have the exact inverse selection of this tree line uh, and it will work out so then what we need to do is we need to decide how many more trees are here down here maybe a lot more maybe not so many more uh, maybe some more over here in a second try sloppily now but you kind of get it still uh, still works uh, kind of works out so now this area has uh, can uh, really shine uh, better I, I think so back to the demon uh, we need to now also color correct him some more fortunately um, or Fortunately, I should say uh, there's the reds the reds are going to get some atmospheric perspective lighting going on so it can't it can't be all that shiny but we can add shine to it later uh, and then uh, make him uh, make him uh, still more um, yeah just uh, imposing in a different way then this is the this is where I draw into into the demon and this works out with the spikes and everything that's that's fine uh, maybe we want the spikes to be actually a little bit that same color over here right that that could work really well so uh, what you probably thought here is that the demon is emitting light and therefore the 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 side of the um of the of the shadow uh, changes here right that could be the the thought process and it would make sense but we can't really respect that too much so what we need to do is we we need to still treat this as if it was uh, an actual you know uh, light uh, is hitting it the same as everything else because if we don't do that then it will always look like disconnected from stuff right and then we can do some additional blending stuff to make him um, stand out a little bit more so these spikes which yeah actually look pretty cool get light up here over here up here this needs to be more subtle because it's far away right uh, it's everything that's huge it needs to be very uh, how would you say uh, it needs to sell the scale so all the cracks need to be really toned down as if they were really really far away one thing we can do is we can make it look a little bit more intense uh, through uh, all of this um, the way the skull is maybe shaped here we can we can do uh, maybe something maybe give him um, more of this um, more shadows here in this bone area and then of course uh, those teeth sell it to really intimidating right a little bit too dark getting rid of the outline style here on purpose but I told you that before of course and then 
that's kind of nice to have those horns with a little bit of structure here uh, we can also keep that uh, a little bit but we need to be careful because we cannot overdo that um, and if it's too clear and too too clean it will always look kind of fake right so that's something that you have to also take uh, always take into consideration that you just don't overdo certain certain things right so um, that's um, shaping up now this uh, I'm not destroying the whole reddish tone but I've just I can't have that much you know different color going on here it needs to be more tone in tone because it's 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 really far away right so this is good this is like the shadow color I'm looking for and then if you if you yeah I lock this layer so I cannot draw outside of the layer which is a very very common trick that uh, I would not even go so far as to call this a trick it's just something that you should be aware that you can do it uh, and then just do it when you need to not really changing layout of these spikes uh, not trying to change anything that I don't need to change because I of course want to respect the original uh, vision um, but this is one of for sure one of the one of the uh, paintings that uh, will get changed um, more than than some others and that's just because of the nature of the style and then uh, also uh, the nature of the color and the difficulty of the project itself so now I'm, I'm cutting away from from this um, and the reason for that being is that uh, I, I want the neck to be a little bit um, more adding to it in the background here right if some sometimes if you add stuff you should do that more like in in the background because now I would have this problem of overlapping all of this which I, I don't want to have really so I'm, I'm just adding to it um, uh, more subtle in the in the background once I like it I can merge and then that's what we get so now this kind of a shadow is now the deepest shadow that this uh, layer has so it's um, it's pretty uh, dark already and it probably needs to be uh, brighter uh, get brighter in a second but what I also need to do is I have to make sure that this is a deep shadow because remember light was coming from here yeah that's what we said uh, and I want to keep this up but then that that means that there will be a shadow underneath here the skull and and that that shadow also will sell the three dimensional look of the creature at least that's what i hope we don't need to be so exact with all of these structures because they're pretty random structures is like almost like veins but a little bit different uh, than actual veins so yeah let's just see darker down here and then darker over here and maybe we get slowly even darker down here so it's like a point where this is all crazy getting combined all of these uh, structures I'm not sure if that's the best thing to do but let's just make it a little bit like a human where there's um, this um, color bone um, like just attaching over here and uh, of course well, you see me taking a color a lot from the image and then working with that same color uh, it's a very very common uh, thing to do of course it's what you should do um, now we can see that the red is still uh, is working but we might need some we might need some uh, 
these spikes also will will have a shadow uh, of course more like so um, and then of course all of this material it behaves the same so therefore it will also get light uh, shined uh, on and then uh, it will do some have some um, also some bone like bright reflections i guess this this uh, it should really should be the same material over here right so um can make this maybe we we oversell this thing here make it you know like this a little bit um, for it to be really um, we could even have later have you know something like this some starry eye, eye glows maybe we'll see about that maybe not though uh, I think he uh, sack didn't paint them so it's um, I think pretty obvious that uh, maybe he doesn't want them we'll see we can always do away with this stuff sometimes it's just fun to just try it out and then yeah if you don't like it you don't need to uh, you don't need to do it so uh, still the red looks kind of um, um, strong but we'll see what we can do about this uh, in a second um, the rest looks good um, just one more thing that uh, through the levels we can uh, heighten a little bit this dark area we will see how in a second so I make making the range compressing the range a little bit you see how this was more contrasty than this I'm not losing anything but I'm making it more the same and I'm I'm elevating those lower uh, those darks right so um, that's what I'm doing here basically so this making sure that this And now you see how I push him in the back through this atmospheric perspective uh, tonal control, right? So it's closer, further, closer, further, right? So that's uh, what you will... Um, yeah, it's, it, there's nothing really you can, you can really do to, to, to not... Um, let's save for now. <laughs> Um, it's nothing you can do um, about that you cannot have the popping color in the background it's just not possible right by definition um, so now uh, those mountains uh, will make them simpler I guess uh, first of all over here needs to be mountain and then now is the question is is the guy uh, silhouetted uh, or does he overlap is he the more something overlaps the more it's dominating also the scene so it would be a good idea to let him dominate over here like so and then maybe simplify this a little bit because i get that this is supposed to be spiky just like the head but then again everything cannot be spiky okay so then it loses its appeal right it's too much spikiness uh, all throughout the scene making this calm down a little bit uh, also you can't just make a mountain on top of his head because that's like a strange coincidence you shouldn't do that right um, it's too convenient right so that's we need to be careful with that a little bit so it would actually maybe be best if this would cut even like so in a more more uh, natural way let's say and then just do this and then maybe like so um, then this is all the same layer now which uh, something that we chose on purpose what we can do here is we can 
have a little bit of uh, because light remember is coming from here so uh, we can hit, make the light hit the the back mountains just a little bit but I don't want to do it too much because it, it would be uh, would be I think um, too distracting from the main scene but we can always it's always good to have a structure that doesn't really respect the rest too much and then uh, it looks like it's kind of more coincidental um, you know uh, just part of that uh, you know what happens in, in in reality that just lights hit some parts and not others because of clouds and, and all of that so I'm taking now some of the light tone and then uh, we can hide the selection and then just have a little bit of that tone hitting the mountain over here and while we're at it the selection is still active I just hit the selection so I can see what I'm doing here and then we can tone that down a little bit again right like so uh, maybe oh, I, I use the eraser which is not good you shouldn't do that you should actually paint with the passive color in, in here and then we tone this down and we get a little bit of the effect of a, a plasticity to the mountain right <coughs> excuse me so uh, we can also now see that I cut away from the mountain therefore I cut away from the, this mountain in the back it was three layers of mountains which is a little bit excessive I would say we don't need these three layers so uh, I will do away with one of them which is uh, the, the one that is most um, back there so away with this away with that um, and then over here maybe we bring it back from here something like that right so this now to make this just a little bit easier we're doing this in the back like so and then we can combine the layers again once we're happy with that so now sky uh, now everything gets slowly slowly a little bit more um, more corrected also so the sky um, we want down here this color works really nice I have to say so we'll keep this color for sure let's see right. it's doing a lot but uh, and then maybe we want some bright iteration of this color down there here yeah see what this does it makes you know the sky a little bit more um, more believable getting brighter down there where like the clouds are hanging between the mountains you could say so color balance no we want just to take out uh, I think the rest of the magentas uh, this first yeah let's get it out or let's I guess like this and then blues everything is is blue mm. no this is not sometimes you can resolve stuff through painting and that's one of these times so uh, this here passive color so we hit it right we're on the same spectrum so that's pretty good um, but what we need to do is we need to really uh, tone that down so either we're going like this which which could work um, even darker maybe and then you can always paint some more in here this could be a little cloud thing well, we don't really know but maybe maybe it's so uh, maybe like this um, and then 
check the intensity of this mountain again because it's still pretty intense so yeah we'll see how this now works out because also everything cannot unfortunately be uh, the same uh, have the same saturation be all saturated and stuff so that's something we also need to take into consideration of course so then i what you now see me doing is i'm going through all iteration all of these layers and um, doing something on them but before it gets too much i move to the next layer because you cannot make one layer perfect without developing the other stuff so that's that's something that you should never do so here now we have we also need some of that passive uh, color in here as uh, uh, as shadows basically so to mix in with with the tones uh, with those um, with those um, browns here because those browns are really really bright so what we want is we want some kind of a structure going all indicating that there's some kind of ground layering happening over here so that there's actually uh, parts of the landscape that are more in the shadow and then there's other parts that are more uh, illuminated and the better more convincing you do this the more you get this also this sense of scale eventually and I'm not doing this everywhere here but uh, I want to I want to um, choose how to uh, shape this uh, this landscape a little bit then we can mix colors still with these trees and maybe there's some more bushes over there uh, and then this two two bright uh, parts uh, of the scene uh, we need to paint some of this out uh, so the bushes or other trees smaller trees um, because these trees are are large in reality but then uh, um, the other stuff needs to to have an according scale right so um, over here we need darker stuff and then down here we just put the scene more in the shadow in general I think that will work out same over here there's some kind of trees or bushes um, usually uh, I do a lot of trees with custom shapes but I'm not going to do this um, here because it's kind of you would say yeah that's like it's cheating and <laughs> you drew them before and it's not really um, uh, well yeah it's partially true and um, so just um, showing you that it's possible without all of that photo bash and custom shaping stuff uh, just to make this a um, um, little bit more um, more interesting um, still if I wanted a tree uh, to do a, a different tree over here I could always you know just do a uh, little um, yeah that takes longer than a custom shape for sure but um, we can do you know trees a uh, little bit like this you know where you can see that uh, there's something like a like a tree top uh, something like that so um, this works better uh, it's good I like it um, it's not perfect yet but um, it's getting there okay so next thing is um, even more in the foreground here over here these trees um, this is good color good light color for these trees um, so what I want is I want them to behave like this this is all too bright and you see how this brightness here is creating an artificial frame for the image that you don't want to have so therefore this this needs to go right down here we don't want any of that we don't need to see anything 
down here and it's it's not necessary um, because that's it's too much going on in here the same now need to remind myself where the light is coming from top left right so this needs to also um, be respected for the lighting of these trees like so you can see that here now a little bit well maybe that's too much and uh, in here yeah make sure you have a nice brush with which you will always feel comfortable with it's really a strong recommendation from my side because um uh, just painting you know roughly and still have it look you know kind of good and integrate it's really important to be able to do that so and you can do it with a very flat brush or with a structured br brush but just make sure that you understand how your one of your main brushes work okay not doing more on this layer for now because it looks pretty all right i need to resolve now uh, the, this bush and then the rest of it uh, in order to make sure that this because you could make an argument that it looks better without it or better with it I'm not sure yet but we need to figure it out uh, we need to figure it out pretty much now and uh, so what's not good is that the bush ends where the leg starts right that's not good it's a weird coincidence again so either this has to overlap or maybe it goes through everything here um, or it stops earlier that's what I would say so I would say the best thing for it to do if it was to remain here is to go through towards the side all the way just uh, with a lower uh, profile basically so for now let's let's try this and then um, I need to cut something from the bush also. So that's not sure what I hit there, <laughs> but yeah, that's how it goes sometimes. So add to the bush over here, and then now we'll cut away from the bush, uh, making stuff dominate that uh, should dominate, like the rod here sticking out from uh, all the bushes a little bit too much this we can work with aligning too much with the rod that's fine that's fine okay now um lock down this layer and uh, now we need a tone that stands out from from like um, the background um, so that's uh, it's it's doable like this I believe but um, we'll, we'll see we'll see because this is a little bit tricky because what what I want now is I want to to have a shadow pass over this so because he did this already he knows that there's shadow and this is just too too little uh, it's it, it should be much more extreme so let's just light this bush um, or these these trees um, and they will you know get darker and darker and in here then be almost completely dark Wonder if the mic picks up my scrubbing of the <laughs> of the uh, of the stylus. Uh, sometimes it's good to make some erratic movements. Just um, of course you need to practice that, right? You cannot just make any any freaking movements and then expect it to look good, right? That's uh, I know that sometimes this uh, this uh, seems to be um, easier than it actually is, and uh, yeah, but um, don't don't worry. I would say um, just if you keep at it, you will you will get better at that. 
All right, what do we have? Um, I'm wondering if it's enough. Shadow stuff. So now this is too saturated, right? A lot too saturated. What do we want? This passive color. And then bring it in there like so. Right? And maybe well, we'll keep the shine over here. That's fine in the corner. Um, but yeah, this now before this looked super dark uh, like a little bit dark because it had no contrast you know but as soon as you give it something even darker it's it's it, it, it appears shiny again right so that's that's kind of the trick here um, I would say uh, then uh, once this is good uh, lock this layer down um, because we have this now separate which we, we don't really need it but what we can do here is, you know, bush goes up more and catches more light and down here not so much, right? So that's uh, for now. Uh, go maybe through the palette one more time uh, and see if this can be optimized in any way. For example, like so. It's kind of looking cool because it's now, you know, getting more uh, of that shine from maybe uh, the demon you could say uh, and then maybe we'll do it like like so sometimes you just switch it off completely see where you land if you reintroduce color so we don't have to make it too realistic right uh, can but now you, what you can see is that already the rod and the bell and all of that it stands out and if later we make it glow it will really glow right not like before where it has only bright background to glow and you cannot glow right in in uh, in contrast to a bright something anything right that's just not possible so this now the rocks uh, need to be dark and then we go to the character and then uh, we have basically a complete paint over and then we'll see what else we can do all right so um, here again uh, light coming still from here right so um, that also needs to be true for this rock and uh, this is a nice shape of the rock first let's redefine the shape a little bit make it a little bit more edgy Maybe like so, maybe. Um, yeah. At the same time, what would be the perfect color for this uh, lit area? It needs to be, of course, really dark because the rock is is pretty dark, uh, uh, just um, by nature. And um, but then we need to define some shadow areas, like over here. And the way I like to do this is with very hard areas, right? You really need to think, okay, where there's no light hitting now, uh, it can be completely dark and it doesn't really matter too much. Maybe make the whole corner dark. Uh, do kind of a, a little uh, vignetting through the shadow of the rock, right? This is a good detail. I'll keep this detail, like this hole in the rock, this little thing. I like it. It's a good job. Now we need some shadow here. Here can there can be more going on. Uh, we deal with the character then in a second, and then we'll see what we should or should not do um, like it to get darker here and then 
We'll see if that will be enough or not. So now we're going full black because you kind of, um, well, not maybe on everything, but maybe in the corner. Go full dark, full black. And then now uh, regarding everything, we can still go darker here in the corner. And then, of course, over here would also make sense. Now, this is kind of a shiny rock, became a shiny rock, which is not so good. Um, so what we should do is, um, I think, desaturate everything, reintroduce color completely, because it will be a, only a one, one tone. So now we'll, we'll look for a color. Look for the purple. Purple and matches with these bushes, right? It's not not, not too bad. Um, once it does, that's fine. Um, hit OK, and then um, the thing we need to do now, uh, still need to do, is to get this brightness, uh, like uh, legitimize this this brightness here on top, uh, especially on the side where the the light will hit. And uh, yeah. Here, no light will hit, just, you, that's for you to decide, by the way. Uh, you just need to um, not uh, go against those rules of lighting angles that we set up earlier. If you if you manage that, and then you can, otherwise you can do what you want. You can decide uh, for stuff. So breaking this structure a little bit in some places, right? So, and then some rocks there sometimes, uh, you know, they are more broken in some areas than in others. So it doesn't need to be the same everywhere. Sometimes this looks good. Then you leave it alone over here and uh, here it was not covering no it's covered by something else covered by the character over here so okay so enough from the rock for 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 now so character now character now um, a little bit uh, not integrating so well anymore understandably so because we changed a lot from from this so what the character now needs in my opinion is it needs a strong silhouette and um, for that I'm going to first control it tonally um, first the character needs to have some of the really dark areas so this is already completely black so um, we don't need really more than black but um, for now let's um, Get rid of the red shoes. I'm giving him feet, but he will have, um, he will maybe have a feet that are a little bit less defined or uh, altogether more in the shadow, I think. You can make him stand on here and then have those feet have shadows, right? So, it's a locked layer um, and it can no it's not a locked in now it's a locked layer <laughs> so it can very well be completely black down here and just have a rim light over here you kind of wanted to do the rim light anyways that's the purple on the left here that's basically um, problem with that is now the rim light is on the same side as the normal light, which you shouldn't do. You should have the rim light be on the opposing side over here, right? So that would be that would be better, uh, and we can do that in a second. So in the rim light, it will be the passive light from the sky, and it will completely, totally have this purple, so that's fine. So it can have that light. See how this integrates now with the background, um, and but there will be no more purple light on the left side there will be normal light right so uh, 
actual sunlight. So we have the staff, uh, maybe we cut the staff in a second uh, and make sure that the staff is um, maybe aligning in a different way because I want to rearrange the, uh, the, the silhouette of the character a little bit um, and the reason for that is let me paint the reason for that is uh, I want to show you how you can basically what you can do, what you can get away with, uh, with with the character, and also how you can change the silhouette uh, in a in a really uh, exciting way, right? So now this white is much too white. Um, it will be more like this is the actual white, and then there will be kind of a light, maybe a, a small rim lighting on this on this area. This, let's forget about this for a second. Let's just look at the silhouette. This, yeah, we will remember it, we will remember all of this, but uh, for now, let's do this. Get the stuff out of there. And then bring it back because this way I can I can do some nice shenanigans on the st stuff without um, without influencing now the silhouette or I can also redo the silhouette in a more extreme manner so um, let's get to it Now this was bullshit <laughs> because obviously uh, you need to lock the layer to do that first. Okay, so now um, what's important is having having a strong silhouette. So And what it what it does now uh, that it um, what I'm doing now is why I'm overpainting some of this stuff because I want to I want to kind of forget where this you know was um, where there was uh, the skin and all of this uh, it doesn't really help in this uh, in this regard uh, could give uh, the guy. Um, some the skin tone is, is really good. I think it works out really well. Um, let's get rid of the stuff for a second. How would you stand? Shoulder is up. It's a little bit up, very much, uh, I believe. Could be more shoulder over here and um, then of course right this this now this um, I don't know how to call this maybe make it higher but also a little bit more aggressive maybe this is like a hoodie uh, thing um, Over here, we need this to happen, of course. Um, just draw through this because the staff, remember, we have it separate, doesn't matter. Now, the, the situation that I'm not convinced about is um, for one, is this one for the, for the feet. Lower feet look really good, so there no need to change anything there. So 
so maybe there is stuff will go towards this side of course stuff as it is is a little bit is uh, a little bit of course too bright now but we can change that in a second um, put this down um, yeah we will draw over the bell individually it doesn't really matter so the uh, the the gold of the bell is a little bit I think yeah doesn't need to be so golden because it needs to like adhere to the lighting situation uh, uh, same as everything else does even um, so a lot of times this would be actually yellow would kind of look like this in this lighting situation so um, but let's stuff and this arm situation so this arm um, it's not bad it's just I think um, a little bit almost would need this hand to turn a little bit more um, of course that's tricky because let me th see well actually it, it really can't looking at my own hand for reference um, so yeah uh, I guess you're kind of right uh, on this could you know uh, stretch the arm out more a little bit so maybe that's uh, met, that's a good thing to do we, could, we, we can check if that works uh, just uh, second um, so if if the arm was to stand out more from from here like so yeah what you will need what would need to be done is that the shoulder is back which kind of is now like this and then the other shoulder needs to be pulled back because you, a hero you don't stand like this you kind of stand like this right so um and that's uh if if you can make that uh yeah happen so then i think that's 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 that will be that will look just fine um or would you over stretch the arm i'm not sure about that so but you know you can always you can always uh try it because we can kind of rotate the arm like so we have had it stretched out maybe not overstretched but maybe just like this that could work just fine all right let's let's just go with that um, the other arm, arm I'm not sure what I would do with it uh, rather do with it uh, maybe it's over here um, then there's a shadow here and of course now belt a little low I would say um, this is good like the the, the quads are uh, really pushed through like you have a really strong stance like that I like I um, think that's uh, that's a good idea and then we need to maybe reintroduce um, now put put the stuff back in his hand like so right it's now depends the, do we want the bell to be like this or do we want the bell to overlap I think it could overlap it's not a big deal and it it's kind of uh, even uh, looking uh, pretty good uh, more uh, dominating down here stuff gets shadow stuff gets a lot of shadow also that doesn't matter because it's a really easy to understand structure you can just keep painting it here and then just lock it back and then uh, just give it 
um, a shadow and now it needs even more shadow we will be uh, will be fine uh, but uh, before that we kind of have the 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 um, yeah how would you say that the thing that fl flies uh, away it's almost like a Chinese or like a like a uh, how do you how do you call these I'm not sure so that I think it could work and he can he can have uh, the belt and he can even have maybe some straps somewhere you know that that could be good and then of course there's more light on here so you you will see it um, you will see this more aggressively maybe like so um, but it's kind of it's 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 hard to tell because if you overdo it if he's just standing here maybe it's not even so much that's that's tricky i have to say that's uh, it's a little bit tricky Well, yeah, but I think it's uh, it's working out. And um, now we need to shade it, of course, also, uh, and then mix some color here, because what happens is that not erasing. What we want is we want that face. Looks like his eyes are glowing. Maybe that's on purpose, but I'm not not sure about that. I, I'm not sure if his eyes should be glowing, um, but maybe they should. They can glow a little bit like this. Maybe that's that's a good idea um, for it to be. So and then of course um, some passive um, light color. Uh, I I'm, I think what you want to do here is go for the for the afro look like um, for the for the uh, hair so um, we what that does is basically we want some kind of a distributed lighting over here and it's not reaching everywhere that's fine and um, but it should also not be too too black everywhere right so that's that that would be i think uh, look also kind of fake so we can give this uh, a little bit more different tones maybe the ear doesn't need to be just that um big and maybe uh, we go a little bit behind wrap behind that uh, So back to the all black and then we we make this over here work a little bit in terms of lighting, right? So um, sometimes need because a lot of stuff here is implied you you cannot be over explicit with just everything in the scene it will not work uh, well um, it will just make it uh, look like really um, yeah fake in a sense so now light a little bit of shadow here a little bit here that's the question is to how big do we want this to be uh, these gloves a little bit long for my tasting also uh, guys poor guys got a hole now in, in his belly which that was not uh, really supposed to be like that so um, the strap is fine maybe a little bit much 
maybe has more straps you know that's now for you to decide uh, strap goes over his shoulder somewhat and then maybe there's one more going through here we're not really sure and uh, also I'm not so sure about how this belt it's kind of a different belt that goes over everything and then maybe you know you could reintroduce like a, a white rim over here even could could do that right so that it could be the case that this this makes sense um, but that's um, and we kind of got a purple here which is kind of looking nice it's like a, a, a additional color that we can now um, do a little bit of painting with it um, so he has boots the boots are like really high I wouldn't wouldn't do that I would not everything can be like pointy I, I think um, would be better we need a knee shadow here um, over here really don't need anything too much that's working uh, fine then uh, trying to not take forever here so <laughs> bear with me <laughs> um, then the shadow I'm just gonna paint it in you know um, but however we said that the shadow would, would still be coming you know more towards this side so that actually means that um, well actually actually it means that it comes over like so which means maybe not painted in uh, maybe uh, do it uh, still on a separate layer so you can do here what whatever you like in terms of wrinkles of course still need to some somehow resolve this um, the other hand course what would happen in maybe there is uh, applications and uh, a little bit of stuff you know on on the on the gloves we don't really know but it could it could be the case now as for the shadow pretty simple we will shadow would come from here and then somehow move over those rocks and that that's it so uh, no need to be too fancy there it's actually really simple to to do those shadows a, a lot of the time we just do black here because it's on the rock anyway so uh, it will look like this we'll ground the guy uh, a little bit more which i think is cool uh, now as for the stuff I think the stuff needs now something uh, a little bit uh, um, of a tonal change first of all I get rid of the outline but yeah that that was I think that's that's to no surprise there um, outline where the light hits I'll get rid of it uh, and then where the light doesn't hit I'll actually give it a shadow and I'm going to paint this thing like I would paint a tree uh, so pretty uh, a little bit inconsistent and then maybe we make that slimmer um, just a little bit slimmer so this is cool I like the this knot here uh, where it where it's uh, beginning but um, it's it's pretty massive overall the stuff I would say doesn't need to be quite so massive you should be a little bit believable to carry around um, so this I like it I will strengthen this part and then make the other parts thinner and I don't really need to look you know uh, at the transparency so much anymore I just want to make sure that I get I get the basic uh, tone right and then once I lock it uh, I'm now going to give it uh, a skylighting uh, color maybe this brown towards the brighter side and then that th those will be the highlights on on this 
you can't go overboard with this because this is a natural thing it's like uh, still an absorbent um, light absorbing uh, material right this this stuff so you can't just make it super bright because what needs to be bright uh, is and shiny is then the metal later uh, but not not so much uh, uh, all the all of the the natural structures right so this I respect the bell but for the bell the same same thing goes uh, we need maybe it's it's multiple uh, bound with multiple um, the strings here just like so then those yeah need to have also a little bit of brightness to them where the actual bell is held and then of course this the bell itself not going to destroy your bell design over here just uh, making sure this is metal so it will take a lot of light from from the surrounding areas right it will do pretty much this and then it will reflect the bright parts of the sky like so um, maybe even brighter on, on some occasions and then for this middle part see that we reintroduce some of the yellow and then end with like this of course still needs to be dark um, can't have that too too bright or um, but we can use this to silhouette the bell quite nicely um, now got the stuff got the bell it's time for some little bit I think of post-processing what I saw here is a structure here uh, overlapping still so now we could ask go back to um, what he, you wanted to do what sag wanted to do originally is he wanted to do like the dust in here and then uh, some smoke and then some glows right so let's get uh, to do that uh, actually so um first of all i'm reconsidering the intensity of this um of this bush i want to see if it should be more or less saturated it's hard to say because um, it's kind of working out but um, I don't want it to be to take the limelight in terms of brightness and contrast so now we have this guy with the stuff and uh, one more thing is that I need to tone down um but then once we have that merged us this and now what we can do is actually we can uh give him contrast and we can also give him the rim lighting and then from there we only do uh one or two more effects and then we're going we're going to end it uh, i think so um one thing is um contrast so this guy is in front, so he should have the contrast. He should have, you know, he should have it really going on to stand out. So this was a little bit too toned down. We bring it back up like so. I think that's good. All right. So um, once we have this, now he's getting some light and he's getting a clipping mask. And that's because I now want really to give him some of the brighter rim lighting over here that you in, intended to do it before maybe for here the blues come in it looks good right for the stuff it could the same could be true for the stuff 
but as I said before, the stuff is more absorbent, so let's not go overboard with the stuff. So why clipping mask? Easy, because I can erase out stuff without hurting anything else, right? So that's pretty good uh, for the face. Uh, also going with this here. So the um, that kind of the rim lighting also over here we can do it a little bit to the boots. Now a softer eraser to, to tone this down a little bit. Right. And then we can do it a little bit here. Not too much though. So that, that will work out. So he silhouetted even better now. And then one more thing is that he could really get um, here a little bit more brightness too in these in these spots, these areas of uh, just the clothing. Right, that would uh, I think will work really well. All right, but we don't need to uh, we no need to put emphasis on everything, right? That's just uh, also would be too much. Um, always uh, keep it well, over here. Can give him a little bit more shadow. So okay, um, it's fine for now. So let's move on. Move on now to the background, and then finally give the demon his glow or his uh, <laughs> a little bit of a. Let's give him some smoke, some real intense stuff. Maybe reintroduce this red in a sense, back here, like so. Maybe not like so. Um, it's a little bit too... Didn't mean actually to draw on the same layer. That's not so good. Actually, let's draw on a separate layer, right? Like this, a little bit. Okay, well, that's better. Um, and now we need to be really careful because I, if I go too bright with all of this smoke and stuff, and that, that will not be good. That will not help anything, right? It will just look weird. So, I want to cover him up a little bit, but not too much, not too much. And also in the back there. Um, behind is where you want, uh, I guess, some, some, you know, of this brighter stuff, uh, just, um, yeah, but this is tricky because you can very, very easily do too much. I think this is all, all already a lot, uh, maybe already too much. So then we can erase this down a little bit to, to just have some remaining, you know, smoke particles uh, rising here. So um, demon itself looking not too bad. Maybe he now gets uh, a glowy eye or something like this. This we can do it with a separate layer, of course. You don't need to do everything. On, on, on the same. So if I was here to give him a little bit of a red, um, well, I should at one point, can't be too red, even though you want it to, but it needs to be the illusion of being red and then being really bright. And then maybe the other eye is, is, is slightly different, you know can't can't all always be 
super super shiny um, that's it's, uh, oftentimes it's a mistake what I will give him I will give him a little bit of a rising delayed glow so that's a little trick uh, little little bit like this you know so that could be good and then um, again back to back to its structure can now basically light him up a little bit with that so that's uh, possible um, but not over don't overdo it uh, if you make everything glow it will look bad it will look fake you can't have everything glow it's just uh, not a good look uh, it's, it's a little bit tricky because uh, people will make things look uh, too glowy all the time right so be careful with the glow um, we have this here and then what we can do here is um, have a little bit of a well we can add glows and all of that kind of, uh, of stuff I like to add it in the in, uh, in the very end right so um, but we're almost reached end for this I think so um, let's see um, for the uh, character we I think we need to make uh, to put some emphasis um, what he wanted intentionally was the the staff to glow uh, making the staff glow is not an easy task but now i think we can do it because we have enough darkness around this stuff so um, maybe we make also the bell glow a little bit and then what we should what i want to try is actually make make the stuff you know really flash or something like this something cool and i'm just doing er erratic gestures here uh, and i, I yeah uh, i hope it works out basically uh, and what will not work out i will just delete it uh, later so um that's a lot of times it's 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 a nice tactic to have if you just um, make flashy stuff or effects just try something really really bold and you will see uh, where it's where it's going so what I want is that maybe stuff will you know spark towards one area more than the other um, let's see this is always kind of interesting to do um, trying out to do this via let's try color dodge for once this could be really nice if it gives me the ability back to <laughs> okay now watch this So if this wasn't color dodge, it would look much different. As an overlay, it would look bad. As a normal, it would look too, just too bright overall. So I don't think that's the way to go. Um, color dodge was pretty good. Um, however, this is this is still a little bit too much of everything. So therefore I'm getting rid of some of it again right so getting rid of this a little bit um, and then uh, this is is too much you should still see that it's a bell and what we can also do is we can touch it up we can make this uh, can make this glow behave a little bit uh, softer I'm just smudging this it's real, uh, really easy to do, uh, and should be 
should help with the with integrating this uh, glow in a way that it feels um, a little bit more um, natural, not so not so hyper stylized, uh, let's say. Light here, okay. And then I'm going to erase what I don't want from this. Uh, this is a little bit much and uh, this is all right. This looks kind of fancy and also we can see what happens if we if we change hue here. Maybe that's what we want. But I think the hue was pretty good, to be honest. So I would say we'll keep, keep the hue. Maybe we do one on top where we... Um, where we paint a little bit um, more, but I don't know. I think it's uh, this is fine. It's it's easy to overdo this, so um, you can always add some uh, some flashy sparks on top if you want to. That's uh, which layer was this one so we can have some sparkly stuff over here but again uh, in this case a lot of times less is is more because if you do uh, too much of this stuff uh, what will happen is it will uh, it will be like an inflation of, of stuff going on and everything will not feel so important anymore so so don't don't just uh, uh, do this like uh, crazy uh, I would say um, yeah what is there maybe this is even too much here so what's left is um, we can do some more blending and then uh, we're pretty much um, done I would say so between now the middle ground and the background which would be here on top you can do some more uh, atmospheric blending maybe uh, maybe even more of the smoke stuff um, and we'll do it with uh, maybe a color like this maybe that will be good uh, we just saw it that it, it it, it didn't didn't look super good so um yeah it's um maybe just a little bit like so and then of course what we can also do is to blend with an overlay which is what i really like to do because then you can right influence the the whole color scheme you can make for example this part a little bit bluer which i think is a good idea to do and then you can make um, stuff here in the middle to be a little bit brighter and more exposed which is also uh, probably a good idea um, and uh, the same thing of course um, for the background we can add a little bit of a glow uh, or that yeah kind of a glow to to the guy's uh, head and then um, back there um, yeah same thing but I think that's it's working fine so uh, we don't need to to do too much always but what we always can do is um, to do on top of everything do um, some more uh, overlay blending and that is just to 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 get some of the to mix some colors again the same way that you in the initially you know wanted to put the purple on everything we're not doing it on everything but we're doing it very selective uh, right so we might do on here a little bit of a uh, um, of a brightening and then in some other area we'll do a, a shadowing maybe like so maybe like this um, and then also the same way we do maybe um, bring back a little bit of a glow over here and uh, 
can even do you know stuff like this right for example which is really impressive looking but you can't overdo it need to uh, respect that most of the stuff it needs to be changed via painting itself and you cannot just um, change it around all the time later right so something uh, that came here to mind is uh, I think we can tone this down even more to make the stuff glow a little bit more still and um, yeah All right so that's pretty much it I think for this uh, image uh, another trick I wanted to uh, I want to leave you with is that you can still do smudging in the end in the last video I already showed this so if you want to do additional just make sure you sample all the layers and then we can do little neat stuff like smudging the clouds of course we could have done this before but again remember that i'm trying to make this pretty fast this this process and uh, i'm trying to um, not uh, stick too much and waste too much time on one one certain uh, one uh, specific thing so therefore it gets uh, hard to do everything exactly in the best order and i hope you you understand um, maybe even smudge his hair a little bit make this uh, go with the glow a little bit um, yeah you can if you smudge here what will happen is it will look like the smoke comes in here All right so this 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 can be interesting this effect also we can smudge his corners a little bit towards the smoke right like so always interesting just remember uh, same as with all effects and all glows don't overdo it uh, it will look at one point it will look cheap and overdone and just uh, bad so um, yeah so very last thing what we always do what you should always do should always um, check for contrast so what is the ideal contrast this is what photoshop thinks right uh, do i agree with that yes uh, because it was a little subdue uh, due to me um, right uh, doing everything drastically darker right so this is actually the better contrast here i i 100 agree with that and then tonally um, you can also add to the color balance the same way you did a little bit or take away from it a little bit um, in this case we already already have a pretty um, drastic tint so i would say no need to further change this uh, around and uh, yeah that's the image um, now as for the comparison because um, uh, again we keep forgetting how it looked before and that's very common thing and um, we came from here through all of that somehow came out on the other side here um, really hope you liked it uh, and uh, yeah um, good luck to you Zach uh, for the future I uh, hope you get a little motivation out of this and yeah see you next time Take care.